So I was just sitting in the corner hiding from media, like ice bucketing, and they were like, don't limp, smile, like make sure you just look like you're fine because that's the only way that you're gonna stay on this team. The gold medal winner, Michaela Maroney. Michaela Maroney. Michaela Maroney. To Michaela Maroney, who was part of the Fierce Five at the London Olympics. Well, the girl who smirk launched a million meters. How did that make you feel? Um, I've just seen so many people just be so hurt. That camp was like 30 days long, like no day 30 off. 30 days in a row? I was taught that resting was lazy. My knees hurt so bad. I was just told that I was making it up and I was needed to lose weight. Your, so, your coaches were telling you this? Yeah, I was so unhealthy and tired that I couldn't get out of bed. I mean, you talked about feeling like suicidal and having yeah. a lot of anxiety. It's weird what depression can do to you, it sucks everything out of you. What kind of things would you like to change so that people could stay longer, be healthy, and yeah. not, you know, and also not feel so guilty when it's time to move on? I think that's definitely something that could really help the next generation of girls if they really just look at that and see, like, how can we become better and get these girls to be at their peak of body feeling great. Oh. Welcome to the number one gymnastics podcast in the galaxy. I'm Jessica. And since Michaela Baroni requested this interview in 2016, a lot has happened. Simone has now competed the Yurchenko double back vault, a vault that Michaela talks about during this interview. USA Gymnastics was almost decertified and has all new leadership. The FIG holds safeguarding conferences and trainings. I think about what Allie Raisman detailed in her book and what Michaela Maroney said in this interview often. Coming home from World Championships in Belgium this year, the site of Michaela Maroney's final World Championships 10 years ago, I thought it would be a good time to revisit her words and her warnings. Michaela detailed just some of the abuse, injuries, and general insanity that went on during her elite career in this interview. Later on, she came forward as a survivor. She disclosed that USA Gymnastics' former leadership under President Steve Penny illegally paid her to sign an NDA. She has been a steadfast advocate and positive voice for change in the sport, um, all while dealing with her ongoing health conditions from the sport. And it's been nine years since she had to stop training, essentially, and she's still dealing with these health issues. Although sports seem to be going in the right direction, gymnastics and all sports still have a long way to go. This interview is always an important reminder of what children and women growing up in the sport require to be able to exit the sport as healthy adults. We want sports to create humans who have grown from their experience rather than having to overcome their experience. To celebrate the 10-year anniversary of Michaela's Worlds in Antwerp, where she competed alongside 16-year-old Simone Biles, and where Michaela Maroney became the world champion on vault, let's revisit what she had to say. Who do you credit with teaching you the technique for your vault? Some gymnasts are just great at specific events, and I will definitely give credit to Howie and Arthur, for sure, because they made it better. But I think at the end of the day, it's, it's like a God-given talent. You know, Usain Bolt, like, nobody can teach him to run that fast. You know, it's, it's, but they can make them better. They can make them run faster, so. A lot of people wanted to give it to Howie. Yeah, I mean, I think he was the one who made me start doing two and a halfs, who was like, you need, to, you need to do this, you need to, like, you're gonna go to the Olympics. So he believed in me, like, mm -hmm. and he wanted that for me. I was training double backs. Like, yes. I actually went to, I had a dream the other night that one of the girls competed a double back, and I was like, I should have done that vault. I should have done it. And then I, like, I just remember that it was a dream, so. <laughs> you were like, when you did, I mean, just your timers, everyone could see you could do a double back. Like, so many coaches are afraid for their gymnasts to do that because there's no You know outs. what happened? I went to camp, and Marta was like, do not ever do that again. Yeah. Like, because it was, I, that's not the right accent, but, um, it just like, I did it and I did it there like a couple times and she got mad at Howie. She was like, don't make her do that. Like that's, cause I was like 14 at the time. Yeah. And it's just the most intense block. Like you have to block so high. And the thing about double backs that's really dangerous is 
it's like once you're going for it, you're going for it. There, with two and a half, you can maybe do a full, a double. Right. When you're doing double back, you can't stop. You're going to die. Right. So die. Like, mm -hmm. there's like, no... There's no getting out of it. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I definitely was serious about that. So you actually did them at camp in front of Marta. Yeah. That is the best freaking thing I've ever heard it in my life. They got in trouble for it. <laughs> oh, that's even better. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. Um, speaking of vault, let's talk about um, your... In London. Yeah. Your finals vault in the team finals. Team okay. finals, not event finals. That final, one. Team finals. Yeah. yeah, the one that you stuck the shit out of. <laughs> okay, and the so we can't say world. that. Great. Yes. Um. <laughs> um, do you think that you should have gotten a 10 on that vault? Yeah, I do. But at least it wasn't like, you don't ever really see the score at the Olympics, you know? And it was team finals. Like, at the end of the day, I was competing for my team. I wasn't even competing for myself. So it wasn't like, oh, my God, I didn't get a 10. Like... It's, I did that stick for the team, and we all did. Like, we all, it was, that moment was definitely, like, that Olympic moment. That was just, like, us three girls just went up and, like, hit, hit, hit. Like, if you watch it on YouTube, I, like, ran off, and I was, like, dancing. Literally, all I wanted to do was just, like, start dancing, because that's what I want to do when I was happy. So I was, like, trying not to, like, be, like, really weird. So um, it was just meant to be and very special, and I will never forget that moment. That's awesome. The yeah, Olympics like. has, like, just think about it. Like, people train their whole life for those moments, so just intense things happen. It's it's just very an extreme environment in that building. Yeah. You can feel it. It's crazy. Um, okay, so 2013 Worlds, you came back. You made another team. So after the Olympics, yes. you had your um, you had, had your toe surgeries. surgeries. Yeah. yeah. Did you have four surgeries between... Um, because you had the toe. Three, three. So broken leg. I competed at the Olympics with a fractured chin and a broken toe, bone, foot. Everything was like shattered and horrible and displaced and went home. No, no, no. I went on tour with all of that broken. And since I was, my whole body was just like, Michaela, please stop doing gymnastics. Like we're dying here. So I like broke it on like the first show that we had and fractured my tibia it right out of my leg and um, had to be taken to the emergency room and get surgery on that like as fast as possible. And then we were just like, might as well get the toe surgery. And then I had to get the screws taken out of this because they started like popping out of my leg because hmm. when screws don't want to be in your leg, they, they come out of your leg. So that's something that I took from that. But um, three surgeries and then went to Worlds and just, yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. And I think you showed people, actually, that you could have a life outside of gymnastics and a little bit of a career outside of gymnastics and people still like be a that. world champion. I know, like, and I'm like, but stop, she did it. Stop posting, you know, risque Instagram selfies. That is not going to help you, your gymnastics career. I mean... I mean, with gym, you still don't have a normal life. I think I was pretending, and I, like, you, you don't. You're in the gym eight hours a day. It's not like I was, like, going to, like parties or anything you I still don't you know that's right. just not me it's not any of the girls we're very focused if you're training for any competition in gymnastics you are so there's there's no halfway I, I really wish she could but she can't it's not safe and your mind physically can't do that because it's just like it's too much especially in the environment with my gym like in that place you can't it's like six days a week like every day very serious yeah so going back, you just talked about the tour and yeah. and your injury on tour. Yeah. And that was horrible. <laughs> uh, it, like me always wanting everyone to be as protected as possible right. and all the gymnasts like just put them in bubble wrap and make sure they're happy until they could perform again. Like Were you I've scared always about wondered that? You yeah, thought, I was like cuz people get hurt on tour. Yes. And See, I, I didn't know that. I sh I wish I knew that. And your body's just so done after the Olympics. All you need to do and all you should do is just rest and like go on a vacation and just like don't even move your body. And the kind of the mat setup wasn't exactly competition right cuz it's like it's they set it up for one place. So it's kind of like uh, an amusement park that like goes up and like gets taken down. They're not that safe. So the mat that I was going on when where I broke my tibia, it wasn't a uh, like a mat that was like okay or allowed or whatever the rules are. Wasn't like are. a regulation. So mat. yeah, there was definitely a problem there. But you know, I didn't even think about kind of speaking up about that. Just didn't come up. 
Well, you know, everything happens for a reason, so it's all good. Did anybody tell you ahead of time, like, with a fracture, you know, if you no. have hard landings, this is what could happen? It was just a bad idea in general, but you live and learn. <laughs> Back to 2013 Worlds. You had the leg, you had the toe, you had the knee, the screws. 2013 Worlds, yes. 2013 okay, Worlds. It. So this is after you came back. Belgium, yeah. Right. Belgium, with the Belgium waffles. You refused to leave until you got waffles. You notified everyone after you won vault. But the thing that killed everyone is that you went on floor and you got deducted for the overtime. What happened? Did heads roll? Like That was actually oh. a horrible... That, that is something that kind of really was just like, this is why I want to go back, because I want to be able to do floor. Because floor, yeah, I love vault. Vault will always be like my event, but floor was my favorite like yes. event. And I would always say that in all my interviews, because you can express yourself, you can have fun, and you can really let people see your character. And floor was kind of the, the time to just be myself a little bit. So, um, yeah, that... That moment was not cool, but my music, I guess, was a little too long, and they started the so the stopwatch early, and or I started my my like Napoleon Dynamite pose too early, <laughs> and um, <laughs> is that what you called it? Yeah. <laughs> so my like it was just too bad because I really wanted to yeah. be because I mean. Uh, at Visa's, PNG's, I got I got first place, I think. So I really wanted to kind of keep that going for mm -hmm. more. Yep. And I did really well at the camp, too. I got, like, the highest floor score I'd ever gotten at the camp. But that's all just, like, you know, hidden secret stuff. I know, right? Why are the camp scores always it's secret? It's so weird, too, because I always do, the like, my best things at camp. And I'm just like, ugh. No one will ever know that I got a 17.5. Yeah, like, I just always do great at the wrong times. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I know. I wish I, everyone could know the, the scores and what goes on. I want a live feed camera from the camp so everyone <laughs> can see everything. Um, but people don't, people don't want that there yeah. for a reason. Yeah, because yeah. it's just scary in there. Yeah, I mean, I know. Yeah. The energy is like, oh, my God, it's terrifying. And you feel like every move is like, this is me making the team or not. You know, like, and it, that moment and that amount of pressure had been, like, building up since, like, for like years, you know, so it just gets so intense when it's just like 10, 15 days away that you're going to be, you know, leaving to go to the Olympics. And they never say that you're on the team. They never say that until you're there and you've competed the first day. Mm -hmm. So they're always just like, we can switch you out. Like, don't even, don't get big in your head. So when people say that like, oh, I was so cocky and that's why I fell on my vault because I like believed in myself, like that wasn't, that wasn't what it was. Like, you're, you can't even be cocky in that sport. Like, it's impossible. Like, it's amazing how much just pressure we're under 24-7. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of people have criticized the men's team because they have all the talent but don't do as well as the women, and they name the men's team so early. And people say that the camps aren't as intense and they need to do it more like the women do because the women are so successful. I guess, yeah, we've done well with it and we've we got the gold medal so you can't really argue that that didn't work but i i do think there there are better ways for your body because by the time i got to the olympics i already had a fractured shin and broken like my my toe was broken and then at the olympics we uh so we got off the plane we that camp was like 30 days long like no days off so we're used to i'm used to one sunday at least give me a sunday off and i'll just be like God bless, it's God day, it's God's day. Let me just like really just like take in this healing day. We had like no day 30 off. 30 days in a row? Like don't don't take my words like that seriously, but like I'm pretty sure like we were there for like a month doing, we, had, we didn't have one day off. That's all I know. We didn't have one day off and Jeez. it was that long and intense and competing. We competed like four times. So by the time we were done and we just, get, we pack up our stuff, we get on a plane and we get there and we get all of our clothes. And when you're in that Olympic environment, it's just so stimulating. It's just like crazy, like your brain just starts spinning. And we go back to our room in the village and we've just like walked through the whole entire airport. We're like dead. We take like a 30 minute nap and we go to training. And I get on the beam, I do a dismount and I, I thought my foot like fell off. And I was just like, oh my God, like this, I've never been, I, I almost threw up. Like it was, you know, when you're in so much pain that you just like, it just, 
so bad, but I ended up still doing like three routines after that on beam two and like made it worse. And then I just, by that time, when the pain like sits for a little while, it just gets worse and worse and worse. So we had like floor next and I like couldn't even do floor, which was just like sit the first day, Mm -hmm. the first day. So I was just sitting in the corner hiding from, from media, like ice bucketing. And they were like, don't limp, smile, like make sure like you have, you just look like you're, you know, fine. Because that's the only way that you're going to stay on this team, you know, because you always had to be on. There was no like off moment where you could just be like, I'm freaking out, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of iced my foot. They gave me five days and they said, if you can do a vault in five days and it's a good vault, we'll keep you. And, you know, at the end of the day, I knew I could do a vault. I knew I could do that for my team because if, if I couldn't, that wouldn't be cool of me to be like, oh, I'm going to take this spot for for somebody else because another girl could take it. You know, I think EB or Sarah Finnegan had that and I would have given it to them if I if I knew that I couldn't have done it. But I knew that I could still do a vault no matter what. Right. You were talking about some of your criticism that you've gotten with social media and stuff like that. And one of the criticisms... That's you just know, social media in general. Oh my God. You can't get know. away from it. How do you deal with that? I don't. For a while, I was just like, it's just is so much better to not do it because it's you can't win. It's everybody's always going to say something that kind of hurts you mm-hmm. no matter what you say. So I just don't even read it anymore. I've finally gotten to the point where I'm like I'll say this and then I'll tomorrow I'll be like crying at something else. But um where I'm like at peace with people not agreeing with what I say and with social media like my advice is just be yourself because at the end of the day like people are really going to appreciate that yeah. and the people who are going to get it it'll it'll speak to them and the people who aren't they they weren't going to get it anyway so you just really have to just stay true to yourself and i just stay away from all kind of like things that are lower vibration and just like stay up for the highest good of everyone so i can help more people and spread more love and light <laughs> i sound crazy but i'm just like no, super into this that's stuff that's good it's super positive yeah like That totally makes sense. It just makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Well, you do a great job. I mean, so many people, like I asked some people ahead of time, I like to get feedback, like, what would you want to ask Michaela Marini? And they didn't even have questions. They were just like, tell her, thank you for being so positive on social media and being so open about her health struggles. those are the things that make my day because sometimes I just want to delete my Twitter and everything and then I'll look at like my DMs and they're just like, thank you for that. And tell them I say thank you because that means the world to me. I will. I will. Um, okay. Back to the haters for a moment. Okay. <laughs> Give them a, a minute so that you can answer this. So some people have said, you know, when you see a gymnast who's had so many injuries, and you guys aren't the first team that's gone through this. I mean, every single world team, every Olympic team, basically a majority of the I team. I remember Alicia had, like, this huge ice pack on her yeah. shoulder at, like, the one Olympics. Yeah, it's Yeah, just, and the majority of the team has breaking down. surgeries afterwards and needs, like, a whole six months or a year to it's come crazy. back. Like, you, it's not just you guys. It's a, it's this it's is a, a pattern. It's a that's pattern. It's happening. Like, how do we prevent that, right. you know? Right, exactly. So some people said this is because of poor nutrition. Do you think, did any of this have to do with poor nutrition on your part? I mean, that's definitely a factor. There's so many factors to it, though. There's... There's mindset, there's the way that you're thinking, because it's it all starts with the mindset. It all starts with how you look at yourself. And I think in the beginning, when I felt good about myself, it's everything's good and you can kind of take the intense training and you can take all that and really let everything else go. But when you have, you know, weight and nutrition and um, the pressure in the gym and just all the surgeries just stacked on top of you, it's just too much to even kind of handle. I've just seen so many people just be so hurt, like not hurt, like sad, like affected. Like I was taught that resting was lazy. Resting was you just not trying hard enough. And I mean, you would go into the gym and you would have something hurt. Most gymnasts are used to this, just somebody saying, no, you're fine. And so you believe you're fine. Like I've had, I came into the gym after Worlds in 2013 and I, my whole body felt like it was broken, like it was shattering. I was just like, oh, my knees hurt so bad. And she was just like, yeah, it's probably just because you had, you know, a lot of days off, so you've gained weight. And she didn't say it in a mean way. It's just like, you've gained weight, like you just need to lose weight. And I was just like, honestly, in my head, I was just like, I wish that was the case. Like I wish that it was just, I just needed to lose weight, but I knew that I was 
like I needed to go get like x-rays and MRIs. So I didn't listen to myself for a while. So I was just, I like called my mom. I was like crying in the locker room. I was just like, mom, I need to get an MRI. And uh, I had tendinosis in one, which was no blood flow in my leg. And literally like people have their leg cut off from stuff like that, which is like super duper dangerous. So I had super to get dangerous. surgery on that. And um, then I also just had tend tendinitis, like <laughs> extremely bad tendinitis in this knee. And like, I was just told that I was making it up and I was needed to lose weight. Your, so, your coaches were telling you this. Yeah, so that's, but I think that's what most gymnasts kind of get, or that's what we got in my gym. They always make excuses for pain, and it's just a joke, because like you literally at the, like you start thinking that your pain isn't real. And that's, that's what got really bad for me when my health just started tanking. I for so long just thought I was going insane. I thought I was making it up. That's what everybody was telling me. You're just making it up. Like, you need to, like, work harder and eat less and, you know, it's just mm -hmm. so, and then that's just a downward spiral. And then with the nutrition, it's like what you get and what most girls get, but what I got was, you know, you need to lose weight. That's just something that's very common and that's okay. Like, with gymnastics, you do need to be light or else it's, it's dangerous. With the skills that you're doing, you can't put that much pressure on your body when you're training that long. So there's a piece of it that is correct, but that 24 seven going into the gym, really just hating your body. When you have that sort of mindset, your body starts deteriorating. I mean, I would be training for seven hours and by the time it hit like eight o'clock, like I'd be almost passing out and I'd be like, wow, like I, good thing I didn't eat. Like I feel so light right now. And I didn't think that was messed up at all because nobody was saying that because I needed to lose weight. And they agreed, yes, the, you, you're looking skinnier, good job. You know, that's what I would get. I would get praise. And um, I think that's definitely something that could really help the next generation of girls if they really just look at that and mm -hmm. see like, how can we become better and get these girls to be at their peak of body feeling great. Mm -hmm. Because that's the most important thing, you know, mind, body, spirit, all has to be connected for you to go and do exactly what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you knew when you came back from world something was wrong. You didn't listen to yourself. Yeah. It was getting so bad that your because leg was... Because my whole life I never listened to myself. Right. Yeah. You listened to your coaches. Yeah. You didn't stand up for yourself because nope. that's what you were taught. Yeah. They've always kind of made me feel like I can't be myself. Like, I mean... I would be on the bus at the Olympics and I, all the girls would be talking and listening to music and I wasn't allowed to listen to music or talk. And, okay, and I just we... was very, they, they wanted me to do so well, so bad that they didn't want any distractions for me. Were you told when you go to meets, like don't talk to anyone and like just They focus? really just like think that everybody's gonna affect you, like in a bad way instead of a good way. And I would be, told to like turn and face the wall and like don't look at any, I wasn't allowed to look at anybody. So I could, I was already a very focused gymnast to begin with. Like Allie would be like, Michaela, are you okay? Like, and, cause I was just that like so focused. Mm -hmm. And so naturally that was me. But when I wanted to talk and when I wanted to be open and kind of have that conversation, I wasn't allowed to have it. And that was like really hard cause my personality is very just like outgoing like that. Like, I know Simone's coach, like, Amy is just, like, lets her, like, smile, which I'm just, like, super jealous of, which let's is sad. Let's her smile. To, but, like, yeah. that's all I would ever want is all just right. to, like, just enjoy competing, like, enjoy training. And, but I didn't really have that choice. So I just kind of, like, was just traumatized consistently. And once you get stuck in, like, not speaking up for yourself, the universe just keeps giving you more and more things that, like, bring you down because you need to eventually learn how to speak up for yourself. And it was my lesson to learn and I needed to learn it. And whoever, I, I put no blame on anybody for that because I'm here now and I'm happy. And I'm just like, I'm so happy to be doing this interview with you to begin with. But yeah, so it all happens for a reason again. And I'll say that a million times over. You, so we've kind of talked about your injuries. We've talked about what it was like for you in the gym, yeah, the struggles that you've gone through. And I remember the last time that we saw an interview with you after your March 2014, you had your knee surgery 
So this is like six, five or six months after you, you felt like something wasn't right. You yeah. finally had surgery on your knee. Mm -hmm. For the tendinosis. Too late, yeah. And then, and that's for the lack of blood flow. That they, they can like <laughs> the kill lack, your you've bone. You've never heard that before, yeah. Right. Oh my god, yeah. Um, and then I remember you gave an interview at Visa Championships or PNGs, whatever it was, in 2014, and you were like, "I'm coming back. Yes. I'm going to do this. I'm determined." And every time that I ever said that, I meant it. And even when I told, I went to Classics in Chicago. I like threw out the first pitch, mm -hmm. and um, then I went and watched the girls there, and I was just like. I really just wanted to be on the floor competing. And I went and I like looked at the vault and I just got so emotional because it will always just be my thing that mm -hmm. I did and I loved. And I went and I talked to Marta and I was like, yes, like I'm serious about this. I'm getting healthier. I'm back in the gym. Like I'm so excited about this year and this upcoming Olympics. And she was like, great, I'm excited for you. And she was just really cool. And then I just got really unhealthy again. So what happened? Um, so since October of 2014, I would go back to the gym and then burn myself out for three months. And I did that until probably like a couple months ago. And I would go to doctor after doctor. They thought I was, I got so many blood tests. I took this one Snapchat picture of just like, like 15 blood tubes. Mm. And the lady was like, no, you can't, you can't use the, take pictures of the blood tubes. And I was like, damn it. Like, I really wanted to show my friends how horrible and shit I'm going through right now. So I couldn't use that. But um, I was so unhealthy and tired that I couldn't get out of bed, really. I mean, I talked about it in my YouTube video. In your video I got yeah. depressed. I mean, you talked about feeling like suicidal and having yeah, a lot of anxiety. Dark times. Yeah. Did you get. I'm like um, so out of that. So it's really hard for me to even go back into right. that point. I don't even know how I got there, but I, I was there. And I mean, it's weird what depression can do to you. It sucks everything mm -hmm. out of you. I, I just had no. I like looked at the world and I was. I thought that it was ugly and it was the most horrible moment in my heart because I knew that it was beautiful. And I know I knew that there was so many good things about life that I used to love. And on social media, I would just be like, no, I'm fine. Like I was always just trying to keep, keep it positive and keep up what I wanted to be mm -hmm. because I was just holding on to that hope that I was gonna make it. And I wanted to make it so bad. I wanted... The reason why I wanted to go to this next Olympics, I finally figured it out. It's like, I wanted to show people that when everybody else is up against them, they can get through the struggle and the pain and just, you know, all the surgeries that I had and do it because they love something. And I just one day just was like sitting outside and I was like, why am I doing this? Like, yeah, like that's cool that I want to do it to help inspire people, but but I didn't know how to be okay with not being a gymnast. Because, you know, I go into a Starbucks or a Jamba Juice or anything, and they're like, what are you, are you going to the next one? And until the other day, I, w I was not okay with saying no. And I had no choice in my mind to be anything else. So even being burnt out, even having everything in my life tell me, Michaela, you have to be done. I know you don't want to. I know this is the, the one thing that you really thought that was for you, but eventually, you know, you move on and that's okay. And you have to be so passionate and so in love with gymnastics to be able to get to, get to the Olympics. And when you start losing even just an ounce of that, I was just like, I'm not gonna make it, I'm not. Um, I, I called, you know, Arthur and I was just like, I think, like I, I took a day, I remember the last day I was like in the gym my whole body felt like it was on fire. Have you ever been so tired that you're like peaceful because you like can't even, you have no thoughts? Oh God. Like I was just that like, sounds wow, so scary. I'm so tired. Like, and I just slept for like three days. Like I was that burnt out. Like it was just so, so bad. And I was just like, I'm gonna try to pretend like I'm done and like see how that feels. And I just felt like a weight lift off me. Sometimes it's the thing that you need to let go that's mm -hmm. really holding you back from being healthy. And I'm just ready to put my worth and value into something else. And 
I'm just ready to just be excited about something else because I, I just got so bored with being unhealthy. I'm just like, I'm kind of over this. Like, I don't think I was over gymnastics. I, I don't think that was the thing. Like, I had so much more I wanted to do. I wanted to do a triple. I wanted to do, you know, half on full and a half. I wanted to do better bars. I wanted to, to win a gold medal on vault and to compete on floor. That my body was just like, I don't really want to be treated like that anymore. And like, I don't want anybody to ever think that you know, Michaela is retiring. Like, I don't even want people to use that word because I didn't, I got into gymnastics when I was 18 months old. My mom put me in a mommies and me class. Like, this is something that I'm always going to be a part of. I'm never leaving this sport, whether you like it or not. I am <laughs> sorry. I'm staying. And the only difference is I may, I'm not competing anymore, but I'm going to be on the sidelines. I'm going to be at the Olympics cheering the girls on if I can. And it's really hard for me to be able to be comfortable with saying that because I haven't felt like, like that's enough to be on the sidelines, like to be just that girl that's just cheering, which is so messed up because that's not true. Everybody has their time and their moment and I'm, I'm moving on to my next moment and we all have, have those things in our life. We, we hit different pieces mm -hmm. and for my fans that, have been supporting me through this whole entire journey. I just want them to know that if it's hard for them, that it's hard for me too. And it's, it's definitely a grieving process mm -hmm. and that I'm here for them and I love them no matter if they're my fan or not, or, and I hope that they can love me whether I'm a gymnast or not. So, yeah. <laughs> Moving on to a different phase of your life now and to a new chapter. You have, your face has changed, your eyes Stop! have changed. Stop! Oh my you God. Look, you look like so happy. Because I've been, I mean, I've been holding this in for a while. And I think it's just so hard for a gymnast or an athlete to leave their sport with peace. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you, how do you do that and make people happy? Because their person, their, the person that they love that was an athlete is done. And it's, it's a goodbye for them. And it's a goodbye for me. And it's just, it's just hard in general. So I've been really just like brewing on this whole emotion and feeling and how to say it the right way and just, I don't know if there is a right way to say it other than just being honest. And the way that I think of it is like, so gymnastics was like my first love, right? Like my boyfriend, think of mm -hmm. it, like literally. And like breaking up with this thing that I've been doing for my whole entire life it's like the most painful thing ever. And that's why I'm lighting up because it's just, I finally get to really do something and, and tell my fans that I love with all my heart that I'm going on this new journey. I'm actually gonna be like getting into music now. And I'm just like so excited. I've been writing and writing and just like making demos. I'm in production right now and like in the studio. And again, Music is kind of like gymnastics. It takes a lot of hard work. I love yes. being creative. I love writing. I love just the art. So this isn't something that's random. This isn't going off of like anybody's thing that they're telling me to do. This is going off of my heart. We think that for gymnasts that there's a peak and they hit it and they're done. And I know that, you know, people will probably say that to me, but I don't even think that I hit my peak in my life. I don't think I did. And I think every moment is just a never ending healing and transformation of bettering yourself and becoming more and more you. And if this video does nothing else, I, I just want it to inspire people to really follow their dream. And that's, that's what I've stood for for my whole life. Even just getting into gymnastics, eight years old, I'm, I'm trying to go to the Olympics, I would tell people, and they'd laugh at me. They'd be like, oh my God, you're so cute. And I'm like, no, I'm like serious. And it's all about believing in yourself. And I'm gonna do that same thing now. Action. critical i'm gonna get a shirt that's oh my that. god don't be so um <laughs> there's been a lot of 
criticism from some fans about AOGC and about um, Arthur and Galena specifically that their coaching style breaks gymnasts either. I agree. Do you? I completely agree. I don't, I love them. They love me. They love their gymnasts. But I started to learn that sometimes they really, they really weren't helping me in a mental way, in technical. Let me just give Arthur and Galena, like, they're the best technical coaches in the whole entire world. Arthur changed my gymnastics, like, and I'm so, like, forever grateful for that. But just, like, mentally, they just messed me up, like, so badly. And I love them with all my heart. But to speak my truth would to just be, like, to really say that it, it did affect me. And again, there is, like, a better way of doing things. I mean, I at least got to the Olympics, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. When they talk to you about weight, how did that make you feel? Um, well, realistically, that's how they were raised. You know, they had people that did, had it worse on them. They had it so hard. Like, Arthur was telling me just the intensity that they had. Like, they weren't allowed to talk or see people, or they were stuck in really, like, bad environments with mean coaches too so for us for them looking at me it's like wow she has it easy she gets to go home she has a cell phone so you always have to kind of be like what did they mean there like I know they weren't really because they're not trying to really hurt you that's not their intention all they want at the end of the day is for you to succeed and do well and sometimes they just say things in the wrong way and I was in the mindset where I would do anything for them like I listened to them more than I would listen to my parents. Like, because I knew that they were the, the people that were really gonna help me get to where I needed to go. So I think in a way, like I've heard them talk about, you know, gymnasts like that, like they just have it so easy. They just get to, you know, go home and eat dinner. Like, which is sad that that happened to them. But I, to mirror that, mirror your pain onto somebody else and take it out, that's, that's not how you're gonna build champions. What's so interesting to me is like you, you're, you've got this, like, <laughs> such a deep understanding for the complexities of relationships and coaching and athlete dynamics and down so well. Like you understand there are things that you've said that I think it takes adults years and years to really understand. And even when you're talking about your coaches, it's like you're seeing them in a holistic way. Like, they don't mean it this way, but it did affect, this was my experience, but this is probably, they're just doing this because this is what they learned, so they think it's best. Yeah. It's so impressive, and did you feel like you were, like, parenting them as you were going along? That's like, was so that funny that you say that, because I literally, like, me and my mom just were talking about that the other day. Like, when I, like, broke my foot at Worlds before Japan, like, Arthur was, like, freaking out. Like, just... He was just kind of stopped talking to me, ignored me, just, which was really painful to be like doing, like I got like first at the camp and like just like that feeling and that energy and hugs and then to like me hurting my foot and then he could barely like look at me, you know? I was terrified to get hurt. And I think that's why I got hurt so often because I would walk into the gym, just even just regular gym, just praying that I wouldn't get hurt which is like so like bad. It's just, I knew it was bad. I was like, stop thinking about this. But I, I was so traumatized from that like experience of being so like loved to like nothing. All of a sudden, and, all withdrawn. Just because yeah, and I kind of had to motivate him. Like I would just, he would come to me and he's like, I don't know. Like, I mean, if he would talk to me and I was just like, no, Arthur, like I'm going to be okay. Like I'm going to be able to to compete, like, my foot's gonna be okay, and, um, yeah, it just, like, so I was, that was always me, and that becomes so mentally, like, just exhausting, and, um, physically, when you're, when you already have just something broken, and you're just reminding somebody, like, I'm gonna be okay, instead of the other way around, like, you're gonna be okay, we're gonna do this, like, and I, I don't like talking about people in this sort of way, it doesn't feel right to me, but, it, it's just like, that is what happened. And I think it happens for a lot of athletes that you just, it, it hurts when you're not really cared about and somebody doesn't motivate you when they're 
They withdraw their affection if you don't perform. So like yeah. your worth is directly tied to for you is directly tied to how well you do instead yeah. of just I love you. And no I think what. just the affection part. Like he still like loved me and cared about me, but it was like he would just be like sitting in the corner. Like even Marta one time was like, Arthur, stop being a vampire. Like he was like hiding in the corner, just like just like couldn't even look at anything. Like he was I think it was that painful for him. Like, it was like, he didn't want me to be hurt. And he had gymnasts in the past that got hurt too. And he told me one time, like, I'm cursed. Like, I have gymnasts that get hurt right before, like, meets. So to put oh. kind of that on me, like, was just like, I really, and I, and I did, like, I did keep getting hurt. And then I felt like, oh, I really don't want to do this to him. Like, so I just felt so much pressure all the time to, like, make him feel like, I, w I was taking that curse away from him, but it's just like, that's his own thing that he kind of needs to let go. How do you think they're gonna react when they watch this? I don't know. That's still something that I just, I'm kind of just, I walked into this interview just kind of like ignoring that part because again, you can't worry about what people are gonna think. You can't. And if I was, I don't think I would be here right now. And. Sorry for what I have to say if you don't like it, but this is me. Take it or leave it. That's it. <laughs> um, oh, that's so good. <laughs> um, there is a certain stigma um, that goes along with being, and I feel like you're not being critical of gymnastics. You haven't, like being critical of the sport itself, it's sort of like how the system is run and some, some of the techniques that your it's coaches like athletes use. athletes in general, like kind of right. just like things that we need to be informed about. It's not so much like it's your fault. It's like, hey, let's work on this for our country so we can win more medals. Um, I hope that's not the vibe that's coming off right now that's very like blamey, like trying to say it's all your fault, like victim stuff because... I respect them so much, like everything they've done, because I can't say that I've I've done better. I haven't brought a team to the Olympics. Like I didn't build USA Gymnastics, you know? So again, I don't have experience with that, but I'm just saying what it was like for me to go through what I went through. And that's, it's as simple as that. Do you think um, if there were some things that you would change right away um, if you were going to work from the inside, okay. um, because you still love the sport, which yeah. you said, and you still want to be involved, what kind of things would you like to change so that people could stay longer, be healthy, and yeah. not, you know, and also not feel so guilty when it's time to move on? Not Definitely, first off, is like when you get into gymnastics, knowing that it eventually, you know, it comes to an end, and that it's not your whole life, and that's like perfectly fine, and that. I'd probably like go into the camp and like really change like, you know, the food there and make it more real. Maybe make a different like spot where the gymnasts can eat and so we don't have to eat next to our coaches because we don't want to eat when we're with them and we just walk out early because it's not worth eating with them so we just don't eat. And then just having maybe a nutritionist come in and really like get somebody like the right supplements, check their body, like what are they missing? What are the nutrients they're not getting? Why do they crave this food so much it's because they're not getting enough this you know so um you always have to keep transforming and getting better and better and you can't just be like oh we're good here it's like no the world's evolving like you have to keep evolving i have to keep evolving or we just get stuck um had an episode a couple of shows ago about marvin sharp and we had some in the abuse scandal and we had a couple of experts on and one of them talked about she's a psychologist and she talked about you know, the reason that you put children in sports is to make them better people and to teach them life lessons. Do you feel like the USA Gymnastics program, the elite program, is missing part of that part of sport? I think in life you can, you can take lessons from anything. I don't think it's their job to be like, I'm going to teach these girls lessons. Like, no, we're, this, we're, this is a serious thing. We're here to make the Olympic team. I just think that they need to take care of their girls and, and really form a relationship with them and keep the girls healthy and make them the best gymnast that they can be. And instead of just training them to their death, try to prevent them from dying, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's the little things. It's the little things in life, right? Prevent them from dying, yes. So let's talk about 
the new chapter, what is the daily life like for you? Like, have you, I assumed you've graduated from high school now. Yes. Yeah. Yay. Have you thought about going to college or music school or doing? Right now I kind of am, am in like a music school. I'm like in a music uh, process with like artist development and like just learning a lot of different instruments and piano and just music theory and just like really just finding who I am and who I want to be instead of just being like, I just want to like put out a song because I can. Mm-hmm. Like, because I can, but that's not what I want. I want this music to be true to who I am and, and speak um, through to many people because mm-hmm. that's why I'm making it. So, uh, like, college-wise, like, I know ne- I always knew that I was never going to do gymnastics for college, which mm-hmm. is, like, funny because, like, girls would be like, yeah, I'm going to go here. And I would just be like, yeah, I'm going to be an actress. <laughs> like, I just always knew that. Know. And, like, mm-hmm. people would just be like, they looked at that like I was, like, going to be a stripper. Like, they, like I was just not, I just didn't conform. And, like, people, like, literally looked down on me, but I just, like, kept just being like, yeah, it's just not for me. Like, just that normal, like, schedule life, just I'm so done with it. I'm just, like, I just want to do things, like, that are just freeing and just maybe one day, like, when I'm 40, I'll, like, go and, like, get my bachelor's degree in something, but, like, not for now. Like, for now, I just want to... I missed a lot of my younger years, and I just kind of want to, like, take it in. Uh, you have fun. definitely earned it. Thank you. For sure. For <laughs> sure. I want to thank you so much for being on the show. No, thank you. Really, it means a lot to me to just be able to say all this stuff and talk nonstop and just be annoying <laughs> and just, like, really just get out everything that I need to say because no, like, yeah, that's it was needed thing. for me, yeah. And that's why, like, I wanted to create this show so that we could have gymnasts have more than just A place saying, to speak. Wow, thank you for doing yes. that. <laughs> um, so thank you so much, and I wish you the best of luck in the thank next you. chapter. Um, I'm Jessica, and you can find us every week. We do the podcast at Gymcastic or at gymcastic.com. Um, and... What's your website so that they can follow you? MichaelaMaroney.com. And Michaela Maroney on Twitter and Instagram and whatever. And thank you again for listening. It means the world to me. If you've gotten through this far, um, just from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I love you all. Peace and love. Thanks.